for staying with us. Now, women leadership in Kenya has come a long way. Currently, a 16% increase in women held elective seats was one of the successes of the 2022 general election. But to get this position, women had to fight for their space. Former Mandela Awanoake Chairperson Zipora Kitonye spoke to KTN's Fatia Noor on her journey to leadership. In Kenya, I leave you with this captivating interview by Fatia Noor. My name is Dennis Aseto. Our sign language interpreter is Philip Omondi. To the entire team that made this a success, Asante Sana. And before I leave, happy birthday to one Luther, one of our technical team, Asante Sana, and good night. Thank you for making time and joining us on KTN News to have this conversation. Just for the audience purposes, could you introduce yourself and tell us what you do now? Thank you, Fat. Tia, um, thank you for visiting my home. I'm very happy that you are able to find and fish me out. I thought that uh, when you have gone on retirement, you are a forgotten lot. I was surprised when you called me yes, the other day and said you want to come and talk to me about how I was growing up and the women movement. Mm -hmm. And so I said, Karibu. Uh, my name is Zipora Kitony, and I think Zipora Kitony is a well-known name in this country because I have served women very passionately. Mm -hmm. My life, has revolved around women and girl child and young people over the years that I served for 56 years. I'm happy to say that I came home on retirement, leaving a legacy and a good name behind. Mm -hmm. And so what do I say? I have, I'm very passionate about women mm -hmm. per se, because a woman, First and foremost is a pillar to her family and to the nation. And so what I have done in my life is to revolve my life around the women and women and activities that they are doing. Some of us grew up during colonial times, but I'm not saying that I knew everything. There were some elders who were before me who did much more. There are women of Kenya who did much more for women than I have done. Because one thing, there were no facilities or, or, or transportation or moving around communication was a real challenge. But they were able to pursue and penetrate their way until the women saw the light of the day. And so what I'm saying is I took over around the 50s when I came to know about the women movement. And uh, as I have served in Mendeleev until I retired 2017, mm -hmm. I, I, I did a lot and I say that uh, there was a lot to discover in life and therefore by doing that, there's also a law that we've changed, but I'm not saying I changed it myself. I attribute my uh, recognition to those pioneers, people like Mama uh, Ruth Habwe, Phoebe CEO, mm -hmm. Margaret Kenyatta, uh, uh, Child Mbogo, some are gone. Uh, I, I don't even remember some of the, some are still around, mm -hmm. but those women did a lot. But what I want to say on the onset is that uh, the challenge that a woman faced in the early days is that they were not recognized mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, a woman, a place is supposed to be at the background not to be at the front. 
and therefore you have no business coming out. So you are basically you are supposed to be behind the kitchen or where you are not seen or even heard. So I think the pioneers realized that this is not right because that is complete discrimination. And therefore by coming together, they were able to chart their course and decided the strategy on how to move. And that is how they started. But then how Mendeleo came to be perceived is that it was a colonial weapon where the women of the governors and the rulers by that time were using to bring welfare and better nutrition to the wives of the home guards, those who were supporting the colonial rule. But then we are lucky that when the late president, Chomo Kenyatta, took over the country in 1963, he realized that this organ, which was the women movement by the Mzungu women, was a good thing. So he supported. And so the second president supported, and that's how I came in myself on the second president. But I want to say that the first mistake that was ever done is when the first constitution of Kenya was inaugurated or discussed, all the processes, women were not involved. And that is when they went to Lancaster. The British insisted that there should be a woman. At that time, they looked around, there were no women, but they found one lady from Western Kenya who was a little bit educated, the late Mama Priscilla Apuao. And Mama Priscilla was quickly rushed to London to make the balance on the negotiations. But still, mm -hmm. when the constitution was written, nothing was mentioned about that woman again. We are still forgotten. And therefore, we formed the government. Government was formed in 63, things went on. There were some women again who went to Lord War. Some are still are surviving. During Kenyatta's detention in Lord War, some women regrouped themselves, went all the way with very difficult journey, transportation. They slept five days on the road to reach Lord War, taking some vegetables, cabbages, some fruits to the late president and told him that we want you out. The women of Kenya have said we want you out to come. So the women had a vision and they were able to see that as early as in, during those days of Mau Mau. So I salute those women because some of us, when I grew up, I realized my mother was also in the movement and that is how I got interested. Mm -hmm. And I joined Mindeleo in 1964. And in, from then, I found my way out to, until I got to the national level, which I served for 11 and a half years. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that I was able to bring so many changes. Mm -hmm. So what am I trying to say here is that uh, now that we procumulated after the change of the constitution in 2010. Mm -hmm. Now that's when women issues have just been incorporated in the constitution of Kenya. And also the women movement and non-governmental organizations who are pro-women also did a lot of campaigns to try to persuade governments to eradicate, eliminate discrimination. And that is how the United Nations actually took it very seriously and uh, 
created the platform of action and created the status of women within the United Nations. And that is how women of Kenya participated fully. Mm -hmm. The first conference in Mexico, which I personally attended, I was very, very young at that time, a young mother, and the delegation of Kenya were there. I was also there representing the youth. But I didn't, little did I know <clears throat> that one day I would be so much in it that I made a lot of changes. Why? I made changes in FGM. It was legalized during my time. Mm -hmm. I have made changes in culture and education. Uh, some women like Beth Muko has put in bills it's in parliament, Mama Phoebe Asiyo, and so on and so on. So we, women have done so much for the women of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And that is where we are right now. So the, the UN first UN conference was held in Mexico in 75. The second conference was in Denmark. The third conference was in Nairobi, mm -hmm. for which I also fully participated. I was in the National Steering Committee, and we made sure that uh, we did a smart, good job. And that is when, in 19, the fourth conference was in China, in Beijing, where Kenya took 500 women. I think, I don't know whether you were born at that time. And therefore, we took about 500 women, and there was a talk. But let me go back a little bit to say that the, the third conference, which was Nairobi, mm -hmm. do you know the men ran out of Nairobi, including the late President Moy, went to Kabarak because he couldn't stay in Nairobi, but he opened the conference and went home. All the men had to leave Nairobi for the women. The women of the world came to Kenya, and the Kenyan government and the Kenyan women did a beautiful conference. That is when the platform of action was muted. And now we moved to Beijing and we took Kenya, took 500 women because China recognized us. We were friends with China. And uh, I went there twice as a head of the delegation for Kenyan women. And they, they really respected us. So we assisted China also to do the beautiful conference in China. And that's when the, 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 the platform of action, the, the 12 critical areas of concern was muted. And these 12 critical concern became the pipe for every government who is a member of the UN to make sure that these protocols are followed to the letter by each government. And therefore, there was a checklist to make sure that this is imp implemented. Mm -hmm. And that is how women now have come up. Mm -hmm. Things have happened. But the campaign, before we reach to what I'm talking about, was so aggressively done by those women who have just mentioned, and I say, I salute them for what they did for this country. Now, here we are. We've gotten the canes, yes. Eradication of violence, COVAF. The women are on the table of leadership. They can be anywhere to pray. We have seen women, we've witnessed Tanzania of a women president. This was our work. Liberia had the president woman and many other women presidents, their vice presidents. Women are everywhere. Army changed. It used to be a woman, you cannot be married if you are in the army. We've changed all those things. And how was the education system like during that time? How was the education system like for a woman easy. at that time? It was not easy. If you get uh, 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 pregnant, you have to go home that now you can have your child. Now in parliaments, you can have your child in parliament. Before you couldn't. You could not take your hand back in parliament. Even during my time, I wore trousers and I became an issue. But I had to be defended by the speaker and I also put my foot down. 
So now women wear trousers. There were so many things. Women were curtailed. Women were forbidden to do this and that and that. So we have done struggles and many changes have come to be. But my very concern right now, in my retirement and in my old age, I see you, Fahid, younger generation, you don't know that it was a struggle for us to, to get to where we are. You are just losing it. I'm seeing it going through your hands because mm. women are not behaving the way they are supposed to. You have to cut, nurture what we received. You have to protect these things. But the women now, the behavior they are having worries me a lot. I pray that one of these days they come to reality and know that some people fought for them. Gender violence, you, you, the laws are very clear. FGM, the laws are very clear. Leadership is very clear. Women are now free to contest any situation. I want to say I'm happy in my retirement that I have put almost everything or, or, or that I've done. When I grew up, life was very challenging. If I tell you, Fahi, Fatia, Fatia, that uh, there were no girls' schools in Rift Valley. The only girls' school was Kapsabit Girls. So it was very challenging, and there were no transport to get to Kapsabit anyway. You had President Mo used to walk 20 miles to Akabartonjo School. We used to go ourselves by a lorry, the government lorry, to Tambach, which is just 20-something miles for a complete day. We sleep in the lorry at night, waiting for the colonial master to come and clear us because Baringo was a closed district. And so the next day we take another journey to Eldoret. There were no roads. And when I say this, my grandchildren think I'm mad. They just laugh at me and say, Coco, you are not serious. And I'm serious. And I want to tell you, the first shoe I wore, I didn't even buy, was given to me by my late sister when I had just finished my cup as a reward. And now, when we finish standard four, see so you do the common entrance. Mm -hmm. The only school was Kapsabit. Unless you are number one to four, the rest were not going anywhere. Either you go to do nursing or you go for a training. So it was very, very challenging, very, very difficult life. So when I see you people play around, I see it, God help you. Mm -hmm. I hope one day you will read my book. I will. And also another thing I wanted to say is that uh, those who were able to get to Kapsabit become people, and that's why some of us are still there. I went to Kapsabit after the, the standard four, mm -hmm. and then now some went to Alliance. So there were only Alliance, Kapsabit, and maybe just sporadic schools. Mm -hmm. But now there is school even at the corner of your, everywhere is a school. So why don't you read? Why don't you become better than us who suffered mm -hmm. the life of upbringing? Hmm? Right. Why do you want us young people play around with life? Mm -hmm. yeah? And God gives us time to do things and there is a, a point of entry and the point of exit. So try to do things while you can and be a better person in life. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to end with that. And I want to wish the Kenyan women the very best in their endeavors. And I want to see that they safeguard what the other generation did. I have one more question before we 
just one more question. Um, right now, the women leadership that we see in the country, we have seven governors, we have women representatives, we have senators who are women. If you are to look at the performance of the leadership of women right now, as to compared to women leadership during that time, what do you rate their performance? I want to, this may be, you are not knowledgeable enough. We used to have so many women organizations. We used to have East African Women's League. We used to have Kenya League of Women Voters. We used to have Kenya Women, whatever. We used to have Maindeleo, Maindeleo Yawanawak is the only women organ still existing now. The rest have gone. So what am I concerned? If that only one goes by the way, what will remain for women? I want you to answer me that, because that is my very concern. When I see the rest of the organizations, tell me which organization is still surviving. It's only my endeavor because some of us level-headed have been on it. And I salute the members, the members of the management who are running the Mendeleo right now, because they are still holding it. We celebrated the 70 years the other day. And so which other organization, they have all fallen by the wayside. Mm. But when they were saying, Moi must go, there were so many organizations funded by whoever just to destabilize this country. But right now, where are they? The, the big master is run away. So the solid foundation of women, which the late President Kenyatta studied, is still surviving. And I want to salute the leadership of Mendeleo Yawanawake for what they have done, because there is no other organ surviving now. Mm -hmm. So I want to wish the women of Kenya well and the women of the world. And thank you for thank visiting you. me. Thank you very much. We yes. appreciate your time also.